Welcome to CHSR 97.9 FM, uh, your only alternative radio station. And you're listening to Instant Breakfast. What a great Rosie show that was. Just uh, so eclectic. <laughs> yeah, sorry I missed my women on Wednesday. I was uh, just a tad under the weather again. <laughs> but I'm here today and I have my co-host with me today. Thank goodness. Good morning, Tammy. <laughs> Good morning, John. How are you? I'm great. <laughs> That's awesome. I hope you stay that way. <laughs> I'm feeling way better than you are. <laughs> okay, that is that is so good to hear. I'm going to give you guys an instant weather update. It's chilly. It's hovering right around freezing, but it's nice. It's a nice morning. There's no wind, mm-hmm. um, but there's still ice. There's still a lot of icy patches, I find, uh, on the sidewalks and stuff like that. So 100% rigors. probability of music. Exactly. Hey, that's the first time I've laughed in a few days. <laughs> Thank you. Does it hurt to laugh? <laughs> no, it feels really good. good. Yeah. So um, I have John with me today, and we're doing, of course, an all New Brunswick music day. Tell us about this first band, John. This is a band called Apollo Astronauts out of Fredericton, and I don't know a whole lot about them. They have a couple of tunes on Bandcamp. They call themselves Space Rock. So I it's love uh, space you know, rock. ambient rock with a some jamming and some singing and so the interesting thing about this particular tune that we're going to listen to is it's all done live off the floor at Two Dog Studios which is out on the Hanwell Road right. up, just outside mm-hmm. of Fredericton I've heard of and that. it was part of a seminar on live recording of bands so so they were the the case study in how to record live bands and the two tunes that they have on Bandcamp this is one of them so Very it's Very cool. It's called uh, Cost of Gravity a nice long tune gives you a good sense of their musicianship and it's a really good spacey vibe i love it uh, just perfect for your your headspace yes i love it and i noticed that there's two females yes yes chloe brown and brooke burns mm-hmm. very interesting this was uh recorded or released anyway back in october of 2014 mm-hmm. so uh cost of gravity live at two dog studio really cool and i love the uh, album cover on this it's super cool looks uh, like splotches of paint yeah and i love the colors it's great. jackson pollock uh, it's great. <laughs> cover yes all right hear it thanks for listening guys
Very nice. I absolutely love that. That was great. And oh. that's a that's a fantastic recording for live off the floor. Like you can hear separation amongst all the instruments and even the individual drums yes. and the cymbals are, are distinct and crisp and the yes. band themselves are, are really tight, you know, well yes. rehearsed and that's that's essential for live off the floor stuff. So. Yeah, you can you can yeah. tell. Um, it would have been a great seminar to to see. Whoa, yeah. I guess so. When, and yeah, that was back in 2014. Yeah. And uh, I guess there there hasn't been anything else released by them since. No, not that I'm aware of. Mm, but I will be playing that a lot. <laughs> that is uh, fantastic. Uh, that was from Apollo Astronauts. Cost of Gravity. Mm -hmm. Tell us what we have coming up next. We have some uh, Brittany McQuinn coming up. I know she's played quite a bit on the station. I thought we'd go back to one of her, to yes. her first album, some of her earlier stuff. I like her first album From a Basements lot. to Rooftops. Yeah, it's, it's really good. Like I think she's gotten progressively more electronic as, mm -hmm. uh, uh, as time has progressed. So it's kind of interesting to, to go back to that initial sort of musical statement that she made and hear her concept of songwriting. Uh, it's very stripped down arrangements. You have you know, basically acoustic guitar and drums and piano and uh, a stand-up bass. Mm. Love the stand-up mm -hmm. bass. Love and the stand-up uh, bass, too. Mm -hmm. That kind of arrangement puts the emphasis on, on her voice, and she has a really fantastic voice. It's melodic and expressive, and she, she has a great falsetto, and she has a great sort of movement from, like, a chest voice to the head voice to the falsetto. And, wow, uh, what yeah. a great description. I have not listened to this album before, but I've listened to her uh, her last one, Bold, I think it's called. Mm -hmm. There's a real difference between that. On her website, she... Uh, she cites that her influences are film and, and video game soundtracks. I think her, her last album is is more in that genre, and this first one is, is more of a traditional singer-songwriter. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I agree yeah. 100%. Some interesting stuff that I dug out about her. One that she opened for Katie Lang mm -hmm. at Casino New, New Brunswick once. Yes. That must have been a... I know. I was blown away. She yeah. came in here before she did that and uh, did a live show with me. And when she told me that, I literally almost fell off my chair. <laughs> I was like, "How scary must that have been?" <laughs> you have got to be kidding! <laughs> Who would have the nerve? That is amazing. Ama I'm sure Katie Lang was a wonderful person. To yeah, be she said yeah. she wasn't nervous because she said that uh, Katie Lang just uh, had seemed so so nice. And I do think Katie Lang is one of my top five favorite female singers of all time. What a voice, eh? <laughs> oh my God, she is just like, reduces me to tears in like, yeah. uh, you know, a minute. She's amazing. And apparently Britney's been writing uh, music ever since she was old enough to be able to to write. Mm -hmm. and, you know, it says in her bio that she's written over a thousand tunes. And, wow. And that when she was young, her dad, I, th I think, worked at a, at a music studio, I guess, because she, she used to get him to uh, bring cassettes home from the studio mm -hmm. where he worked so that she could do some recording. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. She's, she's also a very, very nice person. Very nice have not met her but. oh she's very and, and in fact she i'm trying to think of where i saw her last i think i saw her last at open mic at grimross oh cool yeah she's just uh so nice so i'd like genuine. to see her perform live yeah. yes that would be great she is fantastic i've seen her a couple times she's fantastic mm -hmm. as you would expect so this this is a tune off her first album from basements to rooftops and it's called tom Bullery. all right let's hear it Thanks for listening, guys. The green grass grows in the season that he asked it to. Does this speak to you? And each blade knows just how long it's to be, it's to see the fullness of the sky. Another day, another time, another chance to make it right. I don't want to mess up time with a bit of time foolery. Nothing ever gonna come, nothing ever gonna see. Saying, God, I don't believe that you can separate oceans, put a heart in motion, give a single with this sin, be the same for everything. Because I make you human Under the sun Give you same thoughts And not the world draws In its existence I give you 
you a distance and set you a limit and keep you within me. What's wrong with me? Why can't I be more open minded? I can't rewind it. Today I'm beautiful uh from fredericton's very own Brittany mcquinn uh tom foolery from her uh earlier release her first release i believe so thank you very much john for that and i guess i should say that you are listening to chsr 97.9 fm here in fredericton and uh you're listening to instant breakfast on this thursday and i'm your host tammy and my co-host John Einstein is with me, which I am very appreciative of. He always has so many responsibilities here. <laughs> Cheer me up, <laughs> make me laugh, play great music. Healing Thank the you, world John. through music. Thank you, yes, <laughs> absolutely. And destroying it at the same time. <laughs> so this is interesting. I've never heard of this person. Well, before we play that, I, I just want to mention that I wanted to play another Brittany McQuinn tune. Well, it's it's a new band that she has. Uh, it's a, I thought I'd mention it. It's called Bloom, and they have a. It's her and her producer. They collaborate on everything. Daniel James, and they just put out a, an awesome new single called "Lose You," and it's, it's kind of dark electronic synth pop. The reason I couldn't play it is that there's some f bombs littered throughout oh, it. <laughs> yes, she actually she told me about that. Yeah. And she said there were f bombs, and I said uh, she said you need a radio uh, release for yeah. that, and I said absolutely I do, <laughs> yes uh, absolutely. Uh, they're, yes. they're, mu- they're muted and they're done in a not a cross way at all, like very artistic. And I was curious, can we get away with playing this? Is like what really are the regulations around this? So I found myself yeah. reading the Canadian Association of Broadcasters Code of Conduct <laughs> at like two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> yep, we can't. A, a darn fine that. read. We cannot <laughs> <laughs> we can't, no, no. And, and so the guidelines around that is that you can't, It's an F-bomb is considered offensive music, and you can technically get away with it between the hours of 9 p.m. That's and right. 6 a.m. That is correct. You should technically uh, preface it with a, with a warning to your readers, mm-hmm. <laughs> a disclaimer. Yep. That is just correct. To, just to prepare their, their sensibilities for the... <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, that is all correct. That's why Mark is, that Isn't that crazy in this day and age? Day. Like, it is very, very crazy. That, that we still have this weird collision of art and, uh, and morality, yes, really. Yes, yeah. exactly. It's, like, it's just a, such an antiquated sensibility. It just I, blows my mind. I totally... To- 100% yeah. agree with you. I, uh, it and, just... And, uh, and yet we can have 
all the sex and violence, especially in the context of selling stuff, here's what offends me, crass commercialism during you mm -hmm. know the hours that children can be in influenced. Mm -hmm. So you can sell uh, sugary drinks and food with no nutritional mm -hmm. content whatsoever. Absolutely, absolutely. And wrap that all up in like sexuality and everything, and sell it to and kids. That's just kids, fine. right? That's just <laughs> kids. Fine. What if, what I get really offended at is at Christmas, when you just hear nothing but the Christmas music. That is very, very offensive to it, me. It's so horrible. Very uh, offensive. The, uh, the selling of sugary foods just drives me crazy. Yeah. Like they, they shouldn't be, not be targeting kids. Like we have a real problem in North America ca and Canada too with, with obesity. I, mm -hmm. <laughs> I got thinking about all of this stuff, so I started <laughs> looking, up the s looking up the <laughs> stats, and it's something like 29% of Canadians are obese, and then on top of that, another, uh, what was it? 30, 31% are overweight, so like 70% of the population has a bad relationship mm -hmm. with food. Mm -hmm. and, and so to have commercials on air, on radio or TV or whatever, that target young kids, mm -hmm. right, with the idea of hooking them into this, these bad eating patterns, like that does yes. real damage to that like to people, like real damage. It's not, it's not like a, the occasional F-bomb being thrown around. It's, exactly. This is real damage. It damages. Exactly. Like the F-bomb isn't going to give you diabetes. No, it's not. <laughs> I <laughs> no, don't it's not. think. And, and you, can, you can hear that F-bomb everywhere. Like there is this thing called the internet out there now that, you know, overshadows radio. And in fact, we stream. Yes. Here, here's another interesting thing that I ran, ran across is that the, the F-bomb, if it's done on French radio, isn't considered offensive because the argument has been made that it doesn't have the same connotations in the, in the French oh, language. Oh, really? So isn't, isn't oh, that, that's isn't just that odd? really, really good to know. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> that is very odd. So we should have a French language uh, version yes. of the show and just play all, all songs with songs, F-bombs. There yeah. are so many. <laughs> like my favorite song on, I forget. No, I can't remember what album. Oh, I know what it was. It wasn't even the F bomb. It was the S H I T bomb <laughs> on on um, our favorite band around. One of our favorite bands around here. I can't. Why is their name not coming to me now? Kill Chicago. <laughs> Kill Chicago. Yeah. My favorite song on there has has that, and I, I couldn't play it. <laughs> yeah. Because it's the same thing. I think you can say the S H word after six, maybe after six p.m. Yeah. But, uh, and, you know, it discludes entire genres of music like rap and hip hop. And that's a form of music that comes from marginalized populations as well. So they're doubly marginalized by never being right. able to play on, that's right. on the radio. You know, that's and, right. and for what? Because of, uh, I don't know, antiquated uh, yeah. moralities it's, that, is, that we impose that we put, impose on art, which which is supposed to be. It's supposed to be on the margins of society. That's the whole power. If it's not, then it's probably pretty insipid. <laughs> you're, you're so right. What a great, uh, what a great uh, argument that is, John. Uh, I'm almost, I'm almost done with my rant. No, but, yeah, I love it. That is a good, <laughs> good, good rant. And you know, and uh, makes and me want to just yell out, "Fudge, <laughs> <laughs> fudge this!" Yeah, when, gosh, uh, golly gee willikers. <laughs> <laughs> when I go on Bandcamp and I want to play something like, I love Young Satan in Love. I love those guys. Are you but, allowed to say Satan? But, but I'm, I just, <laughs> I don't know what, I, I can't remember all those tunes and what, you know. And then one, one morning I played a, a Motherhood <laughs> song and it had the F-bomb in it like all the way through the second half <laughs> of the song. I was like... Oh man, am I in trouble now? I, I think I accidentally played one of those too. At one of these. Uh, I'd, I'd listen to most of the tune, and then the the latter half of it was. Mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that was the breakfast. Oh uh, yeah. I love that tune. Also, <laughs> love that. Yeah. Oh, anyway, that was a good yeah. rant. George uh, Stromalopoulos uh, got into a little issue too, apparently by taking the Lord's name in vain. And this was late at night. His show runs late at night, but yes, yeah, so there were some. <laughs> There was one irate letter in particular, yes, about offending religious, not minorities, I guess majorities. But anyway, that is just so, <laughs> like you said, antiquated. What it's I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is that we post on our Facebook site, Instant Breakfast NB. Just search it up on Facebook. We post a playlist every week. I'm going to pretend that we actually played that and include it on the playlist, and I would encourage everybody to buck the system and listen to this F-bomb scatter. It's a great tune. <laughs> That's right, because you can, right? You can. On that, on Facebook. Yeah. I love it. What a great idea. You're always thinking, That's, that is such a great <laughs> idea. I absolutely love that. 
And, and yeah, I don't, start know. I could, I don't even get me started on the things that, that uh, insult and offend me. Uh, I could just go on and on and on and on and people would not like me anymore. So in, instead of playing that, we're going to play some uh, some country music. <laughs> Should be palatable to everybody. <laughs> All right. Yes. Hopefully nobody will find this offensive in any way, shape or form. So, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah you gotta tell I, us about I'm this story. Talk a little bit about it. <laughs> 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 You're trying to shut me down. No, uh, I'm not at all. <laughs> to get me started, it's hard to stop me. <laughs> so th- this is a guy named Chris Cummings who I didn't really know anything about. I kind of heard the name. Have you heard of Chris Cummings? I have not. You have not, and it's it's strange that that we're not more familiar with him because he is kind of a big name in country he's actually written a grammy nominated song he's had like massive hits six albums huge resume in country music multiple ccma ecma and juno nominations he's from saint john grammy nominated tune he co-wrote a tune with a don schlitz uh well-known country uh, songwriter a tune called 20th Century that the that the band Alabama put out. In fact, they called their oh. their album 20th Century, and then the, the album was nominated for for a Grammy. He wrote this when he was 25, wow. 25 years old, and he he writes a Grammy nominated tune slash album, and it was on the number five on the Billboard country charts. So <laughs> That's this crazy. is rather traditional country then. Yeah. Okay. And he was, he was also the youngest artist that was ever signed to Warner Music in Nashville in, at the age of 17. Whoa. Yeah, he's played with all, that the, is wild. all of the big country names like Tammy Wynette and George Jones and Clint Black and Garth Brooks and Trisha Yearwood and Dwight Yoakam. Like, he's played with all these people. That, and, <laughs> and he, that is incredible. It's crazy that he's not a bigger name in New Brunswick. Well, I mean, he, he is. He was named ambassador of New Brunswick in a ceremony a little while ago. It's interesting. I had a, had a practice this week. We're working on some new tunes with Sleepy Driver, and I asked our uh, pedal steel player, who has got more of a head in the country music scene than I do, of course, pedal steel, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah, he knows Chris. He said, in fact, I played on his first album. <laughs> so, kidding me. Yeah, so Dave Palmer, our pedal steel player, played pedal steel on the tune that we're about to, to listen that to. That is so cool. Yeah, along with Ann Murray's longtime guitarist. All right. So we're going to listen to... A tune off Chris Cummings' first album, Give Me Tonight, a tune called Favorites. Did this album when you were 17 years old on the Warner Brothers Nashville label. And what was the name of the song again? I can look at it. I was going to say The Favorites, but no. The Favorites was the tune that I was going to play. And then is when it I heard Almost the Always? Dave, or is almost that the Always. Name? Almost Always. Yeah. Okay, cool. Here is Almost Always from Chris Cummings. Yes. 
Well, holy fudge. <laughs> That's all I have to say. Holy fudge. 17 years old, eh? That is just incredible. That was really <laughs> great. Great musicianship, great lyrics, great voice. Mm -hmm. um, that was fantastic, yeah. John. I'm glad you found that. Yeah, country star out Almost of St. John, New Brunswick. Always. Thanks for listening, guys. CHSR 97.9 FM Instant Breakfast on this uh, Thursday morning with John. And I am just going to take this little second to say, don't forget to check out our calendar, chsrfm.ca slash calendar, because it is really updated and there are just so many uh, things to do here in Fredericton. Okay, so John, what do we have? Oh, these guys are great. I oh, yeah. love these guys. There's a, a band from Fredericton called Tactus. And they're, they're a great. kind of a progressive metal band. Uh, we're going to do an instrumental version of one of their tunes. They, they just, in 2018, released uh, two versions of the same tune. Uh, it's called Glass Atlas, and there's one with singing and one without. Oh, cool. Uh, I didn't realize there were two versions. I have not heard the instrumental. So I thought we'd play the instrumental one so we didn't risk the possibility of, of yes, F-bombs. you know what. Because yeah, <laughs> with metal music, an F-bomb sounds like, <laughs> <laughs> That was a joke. I love metal music. <laughs> I do too. Yes, I do too. So, yeah. and I do absolutely love Tactus. I think they're great. Yeah, they're like a five five piece band. They met as when they were uh, students in St. Thomas University, and just kind of kept going. And when they started out, instead of working on a bunch of tunes together and, and then releasing an album, what they decided to do is something which is it's kind of more akin to the modern age of how you release things, which is one tune at a time. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Right. The, the idea of an album is kind of in in doubt now. Like we. We have this conversation all the time with Sleepy Driver is, do we release an album? Do we re release a couple of tunes when we have them done? Do we release a single a song? It's it's really hard to say because people don't listen to albums in the same way that they no. that they used to, right? They don't have the patience. Yeah, and, and, and everything's electronic, so they, you know, they're assembling playlists of all the favorite tunes that they have. And That's right. Yeah, it's so much easier to do. I mean, yeah. a, play, a playlist was not possible in the, in the days of turntables, with right. cassettes, things change a little bit. Yes. Um, yeah, I'm very old-fashioned that way. I like to listen to an album in its entirety. In fact, if anybody skips a song, or if I ha I'm in the car with my CD on, and anybody tries to skip a song, I get very upset. <laughs> I, I do, too. And I don't know if it's old-fashioned. To me, to me, an album embodies like a... It's a coherent vision in a particular point in time of of a band, and, and you can listen to different albums over time from the same band and mm -hmm. see how that they may have changed musically. That's right, progressed. Yeah, um, yeah, and I feel like people put albums together in a in a certain way for mm -hmm. a reason. Um, they put songs together in an order for a particular reason. Yes, and uh, it's yeah. usually cohesive and um, flows and I love it mm -hmm. so anyway so they, they did ultimately release an EP and then a full album but what they did was released tunes one at a, one at a time and I guess the Glass Atlas will possibly be the first tune of their of their next uh, anyway I chose the instrumental version of it not not because of the possibility of F-bombs actually it's because they're a really fantastic band Musically, they have really great arrangements. There's a, there's a sophistication to their music that when you strip away the lyrics, it becomes a really, really good listen. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you. I'm so glad that you chose this today. I'm really stoked to hear it. Yeah. And uh, thanks, everybody out there, for listening yeah. today. And just one more thing. Oh, yeah. If you're a, if you're a musician, you can download the uh, guitar and bass tablature for this. That is Go to the really, Bandcamp really site. interesting. Google Tactus 
Glass Atlas, and you can download the music for it. Yeah, and after listening to this, you might very well want to play it. It's, it's really wow. great playing. And again, great artwork. I love yeah. the artwork on this too. Glass Atlas from Tactus. Thanks for listening. <laughs>
Wow, another outstanding <laughs> band from right here in Fredericton. They're so good, so tight. Oh, they are so tight. That was Glass Atlas from Tactus, and uh, thanks, John. So I'm curious to know what's coming up next. <laughs> this is a band called Debiases. I uh, like that name a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. D I capital B I A S E S is how it's spelled. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they have an album that came. They're from Miramichi. This, they have an album called Death Strikes Noon, came out in 2014, and they describe themselves as a blend of the sounds of surf punk blues and spaghetti western rock. The only way they know how, fast, loud, and <laughs> full of attitude. I love it. <laughs> and it's true, it's true. This, they, they've got a, I'm not going to argue that the production values are super high on this, but there's like a rawness and there's an energy, an overabundance of energy almost. It feels like, a, you know, in that spaghetti western style that the, the train is running down the track mm -hmm. and it's hitting a bend and it's just about to careen off the, right. <laughs> off the edge. It, there's that, that kind of pal palpable feeling of things just on the verge of going out of control. Wow, yeah. very cool. Now, had you heard of these uh, guys before? No, never. Okay, you just came across them. I just came across them on Bandcamp, and it's like, yeah, I like, I like this a lot. Oh, man, I really love the yeah. name. I don't know be why. The Devices. soundtrack of a really psychedelic Sergio Leone film. <laughs> cool. Yeah. So this is a tune off of Death Strikes Noon, their album, and it's called Hang 'Em High. fantastic that was from the Debiases. hang them high mm -hmm. um, you're listening to chsr 97.9 fm instant breakfast with uh, tammy and john and what do we have coming up next john oh i think you're really going to like this uh, this is a guy to saint john named leo lafleur he's got a couple of albums out uh, this is the second one what haunts your road his, his first album is a collection of tunes based on uh, chaucer's canterbury tales oh wow 
cool. Yeah, it's a it's kind of like a mellow folk. There are a lot of strings. The the, the two string players out of Bad People and Laden Lasses are oh, wow. playing in the, playing on this album. Um, Nike Isareta plays the violin and Katie Bestvader on the on the cello. So. You know, Very cool. Right away, you know, you're going to get some quality musicianship yes. out of it. But the quality of the recording on this album is just out of this world. It's just fantastic sounding album. Wow. And this is from uh, 2015, it looks from like. 2015, yeah. Again, um, another uh, great uh, artwork. Yeah, it's great. He's got a really unique voice. It's, it's not uh, perfect pitch-wise, but it really fits the music. It's kind like of that. music that sort of you slowly slide into and have a hard time to get out of. Very cool. And In the best possible way, I mean. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yes. And you just discovered these guys also just recently? Uh, no, I, I, I've known the name. I've heard the name for a while. And, uh, yeah, I've just been kind of saving it in my back pocket for the right time. And this is the right time. All right. <laughs> Excellent. He was nominated for uh, Folk Artist of the Year in 2015 at, at the Music New Brunswick Awards. Didn't win, but probably should have. Yeah. Very cool. So uh, yeah. we're going to hear which track? Uh, we're we're going to hear Lay Me Down. Just one more note about the album cover, which is a beautiful drawing. Oh, I he, love he's it. Also it's a, gorgeous. He's also a, a writer, and he has a, a book called The Aaron, which is a sort of a fairy tale graphic novel. And the art, the guy who did the art artwork for both of his album covers also did the artwork for this book. The guy's name is uh, Adam uh, Ohlers. He's also from St. John. He's a, just a fabulous illustrator like yeah i love this illustration go to, go to his website beautiful check out all of the illustrations that he has done they are just phenomenal can you get to his website from this website or do you have to go uh i think his name is on the, on the band okay, camp site cool. and you can google him right and, perfect yeah, i think there might be a link uh, a dead link on the band camp site to his mm -hmm. website but you can still google his name and get there and he's got a gallery of tons and tons oh, of illustrations wow. i'm going to check that out know, each one is equally as gorgeous as the last are they all like the um black and white uh or some of them are color okay you know, some of them are are black and white white or you know not a lot of different tones mm -hmm. but yeah they're all there's so many different tones in this though to me they all, all have that kind of mythical sort yeah. of hand-drawn kind of quality to them so. yeah this is an absolutely gorgeous gorgeous uh, picture. I love it. That's the first thing that caught my attention. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, so the, the tune that we're going to play off of this album, What Haunts Your Road, is called uh, Lay Me Down. You're going to love this. All right. I Fantastic. You. Oh, I believe you. I never doubt you, John. Not for a second.
So that was uh, Lay Me Down from uh, Leo LaFleur. Absolutely gorgeous. I could listen to that all day that was awesome. long. Get those strings, eh? Like, oh, my goodness. You know, everyone should, if they like that, listen to Lad and Lasses. Same string players. Kind of the same style, style of music, too. That sort of mellow, laid-back, string-laden. And, and real strings, too. I think we've almost be- become acclimated to, the, to fake strings. Mm-hmm. I mean, the string samples that... It's cheaper to play For strings sure. on keyboards these days, and the, s- the samples are very accurate. But, I mean, if you're tuned to the sound of real strings, then there's nothing like the depth and the tone that you get from a, a real set of strings being played, and, and that's what you're getting with, uh, I with this. I completely agree with that. So um, we're going to try to fit in one more song. Yep, I don't we think we're going to hear the whole thing. Time for one more. This is uh, John Richard from uh, Camelton in 2016. He put out an album called Lost in, in Dublin, and it was based on a, a trip that he took to London, wandering the city, got inspired by the, by the architecture and the people, and uh, out of that came an album. This is a tune called I Fall Apart off of his album Lost in Dublin. Thank you so much again for being here today, John. I'm going to say goodbye to everybody really fast. Goodbye. Thanks for tuning in to CHSR 97.9 FM here in Fredericton. And have a great week, guys. We'll see you next time. And check out our playlist later on today. It'll be posted. You'll find a tune that we weren't able to play, Bloom, Brittany McQuinn. Go check it out. You should listen to it. Thanks again, everybody.